Let's move on to item number 11. What is the volume in centimeters cubed of a sphere with a diameter of 12 cm? Did you go for letter A, B, C, or D? We have to be reminded that to get the volume, most likely we will be using the, it would be easier to use the radius. So if D is 12 cm, then the radius is simply half of that, which is 6 cm. And volume is equal to 4 pi r cube all over 3. This is the formula for the volume of a sphere. With r equals 6, so you could have 4 pi times 6 cm cube all over 3. 6, cube, 6 cm cube is 216 centimeters cube. And simplifying this expression, 4 pi times 216 all over 3, will give you 288 pi centimeters cube, letter A. Number 12. A 13 feet, a 13 foot ladder is resting on, on a wall. If the base of the ladder is five feet away from the wall, how high in feet does the ladder reach from the ground? Is it 12, 10, 9, or 8? So in this, for this problem, it is understood that the floor and the wall are in fact perpendicular with one another. So the Pythagorean theorem here applies. So by the Pythagorean theorem, so we have here this illustration. This, this is the ladder. And from the this is the foot of the ladder from the wall. It's five feet. And this is the ladder, which is 13 feet long. So we're going to look for this value, which is the height of this triangle, or the value of B for this case. By the Pythagorean theorem, the sum of the squares of the two bases, of the two legs rather, that's five squared plus B squared, is equal to the square of your hypotenuse, equals 13 squared. 5 squared is 25, and 13 squared is 169. So you have 25 plus B squared equals 169. Subtracting both sides by 25 gives you B squared equals 144. And there are two roots, but we will take only the value of the principal or positive square root here, since... Uh, a dimension or a length of a side of a triangle is positive. And the square root of 144 is 12. Hence, letter A is the correct answer. Number 13. What is the area in centimeters squared of a regular hexagon whose side measures 5 cm? So take a look at our choices. Which do you think is correct? From here, you could actually check or verify for your own sake. And the shortcut in taking the area of a regular hexagon is equal to 3 square root of 3 all over 2, a times a squared, where a here represents the length of a side. And since from the problem, the length of a side is 5 cm, and by substitution, you will have 3 square root of 3 all over 2 times the square of 5 cm, which is uh, this one, 5 cm. The square of that is 25 cm squared. So multiplying them, 3 times 25 gives you 75, and the rest were just copied. So we have the area of this regular hexagon as 75 square root of 3 all over 2 centimeters squared, letter C. Moving on to item number 14. Which of the following is the formula for the surface area of a cylinder? Is it A, B, C, or D? For this one, If we have letter A, pi r squared h, it's actually the volume, the formula 
for a volume of a cylinder? In fact, letter B here is the correct answer. That's 2 pi r times the quantity r plus h. So to make it simple, the surface area of a cylinder is simply 2 pi r here. It, it's the circumference times the sum of the radius and the height. Letter C is the formula for the surface area of a cone. Note that it's quite similar to B. It's just that there's no 2 here. Because the formula for the surface area of a cone, uh, the surface area of a cone is half the surface area of a cylinder. And 4 pi r squared is the formula for a surface area of a sphere. Letter B. 15. The altitude or height of an equilateral triangle also serve or serves as A, median, angle by sector, perpendicular by sector, or all of the above. What do you think? If you have this one, always remember this, that in an equilateral triangle, the altitude or the uh, perpendicular height it's all. It's like coffee. It's a four in one. It's an altitude. It serves as an altitude, angle by sector, median, and, per per and perpendicular by sector. As an altitude, this segment here is perpendicular with respect to the base. As an angle by sector, it divides angle A, B, C into two equal angles, like this one. As a median, it divides the opposite side here into two equal parts. So AH and CH are equal in terms of length. And perpendicular by sector has the characteristics of both median and, uh, and altitude. So it is also a perpendicular by sector. So it's all of the above. Letter D. 16, what is the area in square units of a triangle with sides 9, 10, and 13 units? Did you go for 12 square root of 14, 14 square root of 7, 15 square root of 2, or 16 square root of 14? I believe you would agree with me that this triangle is not a right triangle. So in doing such, I suggest that you use what we call Heron's formula, which takes the form A is equal to the square root of S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C, where A, B, and C here are the sides of a triangle that uh, exists. And S is what you call semi-perimeter. And to get the semi-perimeter, you get the sum of the three sides and divide it with two. Okay, so from here, since our sides are 9, 10, and 13, so getting the semi-perimeter, that would be 9 plus 10 plus 13 all over 2, so that's 32 over 2 or 16. And from such, we have A is equal to the square root of the quantity 16 times 16 minus 9 times 16 minus 10 times 16 minus 13. And you could see that 16 minus 9 is 7, 16 minus 10 is 6, and 16 minus 13 here is 3. And so this expression above becomes this one at the bottom. And we could see, you would agree that 16 here is a perfect square already. 6 could be factored as 2 times 3. And the rest were just copied. I took the square root of 16. Uh, remember that 16 is a perfect square, so its square root is 4. It should go outside. 3 times 3 here, it's 9. The square root of 9 is 3. 7 and 2 are not perfect squares, and they, know, and they don't have any perfect square factor except 1. So they should remain as your radicand. And 4 times 3 here is 12. 
and 7 times 2 here is 14. Hence, the answer here is letter A, 12 square root of 14 square units. I hope you got it. Number 17. If the side opposite the 30 degree angle is 8 cm, how long is the side opposite of the 45 degree angle of the same triangle? Did you go for 4 square root of 3, 6 square root of 3, 8 square root of 3, or 8 square root of 2? For this problem, you could actually employ what we call the law of signs, especially if you are given two pairs of angles and with their corresponding, uh, I mean, if you are given an angle together with its opposite side. So by the law of signs, you have A over sine A equals B over sine B. If you have another one, it's equal to C over sine C. But we are given two. So A, the, the ones on top, the small letter A represents the length of a side. And the big letter A here represents, um, the capital A rather, represents the angle. So from the given, you have 8 over sine 30 degrees equals B over sine 45 degrees. And from here, I multiplied both sides by sine 45 because my intention is to isolate B. And from such, we know that sine 45 is square root of 2 all over 2, whereas sine 30 is 1 half. And if you have this simplified, that 2 divided by 2 here will become 1. So you have 8 square root of 2 over 1, or simply 8 square root of 2 letter D. Number 18. If cosine A equals one third, what is cosine 2A? Is it 2 ninths, negative 7 ninths, 7 ninths, or negative 2 ninths? So I hope you could still recall your double angle formulas. For cosine 2a, it's actually equal to 2 cosine squared a minus 1. I utilize this. There are actually three versions. There are three formulas for cosine 2a. But I will utilize this one because we know the value of cosine a. Cosine squared a means the square of cosine a. So by substitution, cosine 2a equals 2 times the square of one third minus one. The square of one third is one ninth. Two times one ninth is two ninths and subtracting it by one, we have negative seven ninths, letter B. Number 19. Which of the following is equal to cosine to the fourth X minus sine to the fourth x. Is it cosine x, sine 2x, cosine 2x, or tangent 2x? If you are keen enough, you could actually see that this is a difference of two squares, right? How come? Because cosine to the fourth x has an even exponent, so this is a difference of, I mean, so cosine to the fourth of x is a perfect square. In a same in a similar manner, sine to the fourth of x is also a perfect square. And the sign between them is minus, so this is a difference of two squares. And this is factorable into this one. I believe you would agree with this. So we have cosine squared x minus sine squared x times the quantity cosine squared x plus sine squared x. So you see, even though it is trigonometry, still the laws of algebra apply. And from here, we know that cosine squared x minus sine squared x is in fact an identity equal to cosine 2x. Also, 
cosine squared x plus sine squared x is another trigonometric identity, which is equal to 1. And the product of these two is cosine 2x. So if you answered letter C, great job. Number 20. What is the reference angle in degrees of 1,125 degrees? Did you go for 35, 45, 55, or 66? From this one, when we speak about reference angle, it is the smallest positive acute angle that is formed uh, by an angle with uh, whose one of the what of which one of its sides is the x-axis. So in this case, since 1,125 degrees is way higher than a revolution, which is 360 degrees, it's important to determine first the number of revolutions. So if you divide 1,125 degrees by 360 degrees, you could actually see that there are three revolutions. And you will have an extra 45 degrees over 360 degrees, which is located in the first quadrant. But remember that whatever the acute angle is in the first quadrant, then that is your reference angle. Letter B is correct.